Hi, Mel from Schutze here and welcome to this webinar on Facebook and YouTube best practices. I frequently get asked about why a social video didn't quite perform as well as intended. And to be honest, there isn't a straightforward answer. There's multiple factors that could have made an impact. So today I thought let's cut through the noise and um, list up all the things that you can do to boost your social content. So today what we'll be covering is the psychology of the watch journey. So what is exactly happening on the viewer's end? Um, the difference between algorithms and artificial intelligence. Um, we'll go into the YouTube and Facebook algorithms as well and to see how you can actually boost that and beat it. And throughout we'll be covering plenty of FAQs such as what is the best time to post my video? What is the ideal video length? And should I be shooting horizontal or vertical? Right, let's have a look at what happens on the viewer's side. Why is that so important? Not just for, to understand what is happening on their end, but also because the algorithms and the AIs on YouTube and on Facebook are based on it. It's actually more than just clicking and watching, it's an entire cycle that is happening and it's based on five phases. Now I have a question for you guys. What is the first phase of the watch journey? What do you think is the first thing that happens? Is it A, scanning the thumbnail? So meaning, does pe do people look at the thumbnail first? Um, B, do they read the title first? Or C, none of the above? Have a think about it. What do you think happens first here? I'll give you a couple of seconds and then we'll reveal the answer. If your answer was C, none of the above, you were right. And let's have a look why. The first phase is the discovery, because if your video doesn't appear, it can't be consumed. Super important. Uh, how does it appear? Either by searching, so people actively search for your content, or by scrolling through the feed. And this is especially the case for Facebook. Now, have, let's have a look at how you can um, make sure your videos turn up in search. Now, search really has to do with nailing your SEO. SEO has to do with making sure that the right keywords are attached to your video, and that is um, via a title or via the description. Um, great tools for that are SME Rush or Google Keyword Planner. They're both paid for, but they're really handy tools. I would highly recommend giving them a go. Another thing that you can do, um, and I would highly recommend as well, is using captions. Um, the reason why is because Google and any other search engine can then read the content of your video. So it's not just the title and the description that have keywords, it's also the content. How do you do that? Well, both Facebook and YouTube have their own caption tools. Um, they're all sitting in the back end, so you can just have a look at that. It's automatically filled out. The only thing you need to do is tweak them a little bit, put some punctuation in between. Um, but another option is to request an SRT file from your Shootster editor. An SRT file is a sub-rip text file, and it's a text file that has all your captions, but also the time codes of when um, your subtitles need to appear on that video. And the beauty of that one is, is when you upload your video to either Facebook or YouTube, you just upload your SRT file, and it automatically gets combined, combined um, when it starts playing. Now, all of this is what we call a search or a pull strategy, and it's great for hygiene content. Hygiene content is the type of content that people pull towards them, so by searching, and it's typically tutorials, um, FAQ videos, explainer videos, really important. Now, let's have a look and see how you can um, make sure your videos appear in your feed. It's very different than to search it. The one thing that I would uh, recommend is upload native videos, and this is especially the case with Facebook. Facebook doesn't like you to uh, embed a link from YouTube, for instance, make sure you upload the video directly to um, Facebook. Um, the reason why is because um, you want to make sure that it gets organic growth and plus it allows you to boost it um, after that. My tip there would be upload your video, see how it grows, then start boosting or promoting your video. Um, the algorithms are based on, um, on the fact that they want videos to grow uh, organically, but also they obviously want to take your money too. And it's that combo that gives you the magic of appearing in people's feeds. Upload frequently is another thing, um, not just for your, um, your audience, um, but also for the algorithms. Algorithms like fresh content and relevant content because that is what your audience likes. All right. Another thing that you can do to make sure your videos appear in your feed is by using the CCC framework, as I like to call it. The CCC framework has to do with the fact that you don't just create videos, you curate and collaborate as well. Why is that? It gives you the opportunity to tap into a similar audience that you might not yet have. 
Um, curating, with curating I mean um, not necessarily sharing your competitors' videos, but anything that is that inspires you, that you want your audience to have a look at. And that's not necessarily your content. Collaborating is just a brilliant way to tap into similar audiences. Just try to find either similar brands or try to find um, influencers that are aiming for the same target audience. Now, all of this is what I would call a discovery or a push strategy, and it's great for hub content. So anything that has to do with a story, um, any testimonials, any announcements, any thought leadership videos. Let's go in phase two. Um, let's have a look at the thumbnail. Why is the thumbnail so important? Well, after your video appears in search or in your feed, people have a look at the thumbnail first. Why not the title? Well, we're, our brain is just programmed to look at visuals first, right? And like a book cover, we just want to scan it. And we scan it for three things. We scan it to find out what this video is about. We scan it to find out who this video is for. And we scan it for to get an idea of what is it the best of its kind and is this what I expected to see. And my tip here would be, because people are scanning for these things, is create and design your own thumbnail and test it. Don't leave it up to your um, video host to decide on what your thumbnail should look like. And I see it we're happening with a lot of clients. Um, they get really excited about the video. It's a beauty. They upload it and then um, either Facebook or YouTube decides on a thumbnail and it's just the worst, the worst thumbnail ever. It happens to me all the time. Um, just think about it if I'm doing this webinar and the thumbnail would be my face just all over the place, not very flattering. Just make sure you, you um, create one, you design one and you test them based on does it reflect what this video is about? Does it reflect who this video is for? And do, can people get an, an idea of what they're expected to see? Let's have a look at what the good thumbnail looks like. Unfortunately, there is no textbook example, but I do want you to look out for these things. Firstly, what is in your image? Maybe try and go for faces. Faces can be so powerful. We are human beings after all, and we're always looking to make uh, a personal connection. And these two at the first row are a great example for that. Secondly, try and work with primary colors or colors that give a bit of a pop and um, make your thumbnail st stand out like these two here. Thirdly, go and work with fonts that are very large, easy to read, and are very neutral. Now, when it comes to a thumbnail, um, like I said, try and create and test a little bit, but make sure it's not just on brand, it also reflects the content that you're trying to make. Now, third phase is the title. So once your video is discovered, people had a look at the thumbnail, they have an idea of what it is about, they're going to try and match that with the title. Same thing happens here. So people look out for what is this video about? Who is this video for? And is it the best kind? Is it the best of its kind? And is this what I expected to see? So again, my tip is here, try and test. Don't just um, make the same one. Try and see if you can make it um, additional to what you already have in your thumbnail. Now, the one thing that I want you to do when coming up with a title is to make sure it complements your thumbnail. It's just really easy to do and it just you're giving extra information to your viewer. Uh, and a one way to do that is by using questions. Why? Well, questions um, require a click to get an answer. Uh, another thing that you could do is use um, strong numbers like such as fives and tens. Why? It just triggers the same question. Do I know these 10 things? Do I know these five things that um, the title suggests here? Another thing that you could do is trying to work with really strong keywords such as the best, the most, the craziest. It just makes it pop and makes it more interesting for people to find out what exactly that video is about. Now, let's go into phase number four and talk about the content. So once your video has been discovered, people had a chance to look at your thumbnail, they, had a, they have an idea of, um, of what the video is about via the title as well. Now your next challenge is to keep them watching. Question. So I have two videos lined up here. Which one would you rather watch? There's a bit of a difference between them. Um, video one, what I ate today. Let's have a look. Good morning. So for today's video, I thought, I mean, I just kind of feel like eating. Maybe you guys want to watch me eat. I just still think a lot of people are really curious about what vegans eat. So I'm here to deliver. Okay, I'm going to let you know what I eat in one day. A little warning, okay? I have been going through some things. I've been a little stressed, and I bet you're expecting me to say that I've gained some weight, but actually, when I'm stressed, I lose weight. I don't know what it is. So that was video number one. Now let's have a look at video number two. Thanks for knocking. 
A SWAT team is known for busting down doors, rescuing hostages, and resolving emergency situations. Today I'm going to try escaping a SWAT team inside a small building. Hopefully they can't flush me out. What does a SWAT team do? SWAT teams typically will handle the most dangerous situations that law enforcement will deal with, such as hostage rescue situations, search warrants for uh, dope or drugs. So that was video number two. Which of these two videos would you rather keep watching? Was it video number one, what I ate today, or video number two, outsmarting a SWAT team? I hope you can agree that it was video number two. Let's have a look why that is. So when it comes to content, you wanna make sure that people hang around. How do you do that? Well, there's three traps that you need to build in to make sure you keep people's attention. The first trap um, happens at the first three seconds of your video. Make sure you grab people's attention, make it visually interesting. Now let's have a look um, on how exactly that worked for video number two. Thanks for knocking. That was quite attention grabbing, right? I don't know about you guys, but that for me was quite unexpected and it had a lot of energy and a lot of action. Right, let's have a look at trap number two. So once people watch the first three seconds of your video, they're more likely to watch the next 10. And that is the ideal situation where you can now give context to your video. Here's where you set the scene and set the expectations based on the title and on the thumbnail. Let's have a look. Thanks for knocking. A SWAT team is known for busting down doors, rescuing hostages, and resolving emergency situations. Today I'm going to try escaping a SWAT team inside a small building. See what he did there? He set the scene and we know exactly what we're in for. So on to the next phase. So after you got people to watch the first three seconds of your video, they're more likely to watch the next 10. After they watch the first 10, you guessed it, they're more likely to watch the next 30 seconds. Now, what happens here? Here's where you cover your key message. I'm not saying you should give away all the information straight away, but don't elaborate. Go straight into it and you can elaborate later on. Let's have a look on what happens in video two. Thanks for knocking. A SWAT team is known for busting down doors, rescuing hostages and resolving emergency situations. Today I'm going to try escaping a SWAT team inside a small building. Hopefully they can't flush me out. What does a SWAT team do? SWAT teams typically will handle the most dangerous situations that law enforcement will deal with, such as hostage rescue situations, search warrants for uh, dope or drugs. Great, so we know exactly what this video is about. They grabbed my attention, they set the scene, and they gave some more explanation of what the rest of the video is about. And that's why it was so more, much more interesting to keep watching this video compared to video number one. As for the rest of the video, Keep the pace and the energy high. That's so important. You just had your viewers to go until the first 30 seconds. Now keep them there. Keep that energy high. Keep it visually interesting. Now, I can hear you think, what is then the ideal length? Do I just need to create very long videos? Not necessarily. Just focus on the content. Make sure you make interesting videos, videos that people want to see. So for the last phase, what you need to do is have a clear call to action. Why? It's your ultimate opportunity to restart the cycle. Don't leave it up to chances. Tell people what to do. Tell them to go and look at the rest of your content. How to do that? Okay, so Here's an example. Out. Don't forget, we always love to see your projects. You can post them on our Facebook page and make sure you tag Canon in it as well. And hope you enjoyed this episode and don't forget to join us next time for more creative ideas to print with Canon. So this was a great example of a clear call to action to make sure you tune in for the next episode. Um, be mindful though of decision fatigue. What I mean by that is don't give people too many options. Don't tell them to go and subscribe and like and comment and share, it's just too much. Try to set up a goal, what are you trying to get out of this video and just communicate that. Same thing with habituation. Um, just make sure it doesn't become this pattern of um, repeating the same call to action all over again um, because after a while, it doesn't mean anything. Try to change it up, use other words, use other call to actions. Um, my tip is there, less is more, keep it simple. Okay, it's time to recap now. So the watch journey consists out of five steps. Firstly, make sure your content can be found either by searching or by people having to scroll through their feed. Secondly, make sure your thumbnail stands out. Um, Match your title to it as well. Make sure that people know what exactly they're in for. What is your video about? Who is it for? And is it the best of its kind? 
In a fourth stage, try and think about the content. Once you have lured them in, so to speak, in your video, make sure they hang around. Think about the three, 10, and 30 seconds that are very essential. And lastly, make sure you end your video with a clear call to action to be able to restart that whole watch journey. Let's talk about the difference between algorithms and AI. Algorithms is a software that is based on a set of rules. So if this, then that. Let's say if you're looking for cute cats, it probably starts serving you other cats videos. The AI on the other hand collects data about you. It wants to learn everything that you are interested in. So back to our cat example, if you're looking for cute cats, it might not necessarily serve you other cat videos, but it also knows that you, for instance, have been looking for videos and answers about why you have been sneezing so much lately. And it puts two and two together and it'll start serving you, for instance, videos about cat allergies and that sort of stuff. Anyway, the main thing that I want you to take away from this is that both algorithms and AIs are designed to attract you to both Facebook and YouTube more frequently and for a longer period of time. Now let's talk about my favorite, YouTube. So YouTube serves video in five key places. In search results, at the homepage, in the suggested stream, under subscriptions and through notifications. But how does it do that? How does it know which video to serve where? Let's have a look. So the one thing that I need you to remember is that YouTube is a social platform and the algorithms focus on audience interaction. So it looks at how much time people spend engaging with your video. Um, it looks at um, which videos people do and don't watch, how much watch time, so how many time, how much time people spend on a certain video, but also on YouTube in general, and how they engage with it and if they engage with it at all. Now, how do you beat it? First of all, have a community strategy. What does that mean? Well, try to interact. Don't just upload a video and let it sit there. It's more than just a video platform. Like I said, it's a social platform. So make sure you upload a video, interact with it, give some love, get some love back. And the second thing to beat the algorithm is to make sure you get more watch time. Watch time is more than just every two duration. Um, and it's a tricky thing to achieve, but let me break it down for you. So you might now think to yourself, why don't we just create longer videos, right? Because if we have longer videos, people can watch you for a longer period of time. Yeah, not really. Let's take this example. Let's say if you have a 15 minute video and it just hit a thousand views. Don't get too excited because that might not mean it's a, a, a successful video. Um, have a look at how long the average view duration is. You might be surprised that on the majority of your videos, the average view duration is rather low. And that is a massive deal because that means your video wasn't as successful as you thought it would be. Um, to me, that means that something happened or didn't happen in those first 10 seconds, um, but people were interested in your title and in your thumbnail and the content that you were bringing. So keep in mind, try to aim for a higher average view duration by having interesting content, regardless of the length. How do you get more watch time then? Well, before we go into further details, I really want you to understand how the watch time metric works and what it takes into account. Let's have a look. It looks at session start. Session start is the amount of people that start their YouTube session by watching your video first. Session duration is the second thing. That is the amount of time people spend on YouTube after watching your videos first. Session ends has to do with the fact that how many people are ending their session, their YouTube session after watching your content. Now, what to take away from this is to make sure that if you wanna increase watch time, make sure that people start their session on YouTube with one of your videos and they stay there for as long as possible. Now, how to do that? And here's where the watch journey comes back into play. Optimize it to maximize your session starts and session duration. Another tip that I wanna give you is create and share playlist links, not just individual videos, um, by embedding them in um, EDMs, uh, anything on your website and that sort of stuff, you're making sure that the next content in line is your content, not necessarily anything else suggested by the YouTube algorithm. It's just a quick win to get more watch time. So everything we've covered so far is publicly known about YouTube, but here's what YouTube doesn't tell you. First of all, the first few days are critical. What I mean by that is if you upload a video and you see that the organic growth is going incredibly well in the first couple of days, I can guarantee you in the next couple of days and weeks, your video will do even better. 
the last video effect. The last video effect hasn't been really proven, but a lot of creators have noticed that if your last video that you uploaded um, performed really well, it will have an effect on the next upload and the other way around. So if your last upload didn't do quite well, the next one will not either. Lastly, tags only help for five days. Um, don't waste your time on tags. If you do want to do it, great. It only has an effect for the first five days. Spend your time in really nailing your SEO, making sure you have a really good title and a really good description. So this is a frequent asked question I get all the time. How do I shoot? Do I shoot horizontal or vertical? Well, let me break it down for you. For YouTube, always horizontal. Why? Because it automatically fits it to mobile viewing every time. Another question that I get asked quite often is, what is the best time to post? Now, there's lots of information on the internet about that, advising you on the best times and the best days. Just keep it simple. When is your audience the most active? Um, a good tip that I can give you there as well is, if you're based in Australia and you're aiming for another country, make sure you post your video during that time zone. Okay, time to recap. How do you beat the YouTube algorithm? First of all, have a community strategy. Make sure you interact with your audience. Give a bit of love, get lots of love back. Secondly, get more watch time by optimizing the watch journey, by creating playlists, not just individual videos, and um, by shooting videos horizontal and posting them during high activity. Now, we're over halfway in. Let's see if you're still awake. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. How many passes did you count? The correct answer is 15 passes. But did you see the gorilla? Now let's talk about Facebook. Facebook is a little bit different to YouTube. It's actually based on individual um, user preferences and what it considers relevant stories. Stories are relevant when they're from friends and family, when they're interesting and informative, and when they're entertaining. Now, the difference with YouTube is that Facebook users actually have some control over what is displayed on their feed by using the post features such as um, see first, uh, unfollow, and hide. How does Facebook do that? Well, it uses a metric similar to YouTube's watch time. It looks at the average reduction to figure out how relevant that story is. And if it is, it will try and push it out to more users. Why is that? Well, Facebook just wants to be the next big video platform and it will reward you for the fact that you're doing video. How do you beat the Facebook algorithm? Firstly, make sure you create relevant and trending content. I can't repeat myself enough. It's so important to have really engaging content because it automatically gives you a higher average feed duration rate. Secondly, let your video videos grow organically as we discussed, but also if you can promote and boost them. The reason why is because Facebook has so much content on it these days and it's really hard for brands to stand out. Even if you're on a small budget, I would highly recommend investing um, a little bit in promoting and boosting your videos because you would be surprised how much more reach you can get for just $50. Encourage engagement in a unique way. Um, what I mean by that is steer away from sentences such as, hey, like my video, share my video, because Facebook considers them as spam. Instead, try tag a friend. What is the ideal video length for Facebook? Another frequently asked question. My tip here would be just focus on the content. If your video is engaging, it doesn't really matter how long it is. But on average, we notice that 1 minute 30 is the ideal length. And ironically, 30 second videos tend to have the least amount of engagement. Here are my top secrets to nailing Facebook. First of all, make sure your first three seconds are really visual and really engaging. Think about it. People are really scrolling quickly through their feed. You want to make sure that thumb stops on your video. Secondly, use big text overlays. It's just a really good way for people to get an idea of what your video is about in a blink of an eye. 
Thirdly, 80% of your viewers don't use sound. Make sure you use subtitles or captions. Really make sure that they can consume your content without having to turn off that sound. Should you film vertical, horizontal or square? Well, Facebook is mostly consumed on mobile, so my suggestion would be to go for square as it fits just nicely. Except for live videos, um, try to go horizontal there to avoid those ugly black bars. And a tip, if you're shooting horizontal videos, we can actually turn them into square videos in post. Now, when is the best time to post for Facebook? Again, same thing as with YouTube, just when your audience is the most active. Now it's time to recap. Use big text overlays, make sure you grab people's attention. Use closed captions to make sure that people who watch your videos without sound can actually consume your content. Always go square, except for when it's live, go horizontal to avoid black bars and post during the highest activity. Well done, you've made it until the end of this Facebook and YouTube best practices webinar. This session was all about understanding the watch journey to be able to beat the algorithms to make sure your content on YouTube and Facebook is seen. We hope this webinar was helpful. Please do send us some feedback, we'd love to know about it. I'm Mel from Shootster, thank you for watching and I'll hope to see you at our next webinar.